Do you have an application where you want multiple buttons for different user inputs? Maybe you have a timer and you want one button for minutes and another for hours, but there's a problem. You only have room for one button, or maybe you only have one button handy. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is learn how to use an Arduino to explore how to make one button have the functionality of two or more. So let's get started. <laughs> So for this tutorial, you will need a momentary push button, five jumper wires, a solder spread board, two light emitting diodes, doesn't matter what color, and two 220 ohm resistors. You'll also need a ripened pomegranate. So let's go ahead and set up this circuit. So what we're going to do to demonstrate using a single button for multiple functions is set up a simple circuit that has two LEDs and a button and then based on how long we press the button, different LEDs will illuminate. So let's start with using a jumper wire to connect any ground pin from the Arduino to the ground rail on your breadboard. Then you want to place an LED on your breadboard and just make sure you know which way the long leg is facing. Now take another jumper wire and connect pin 13 from the Arduino to the breadboard in the same channel where you have the long leg of that LED attached. So pin 13 should now be electrically connected to the long leg of the LED. Now connect the other pin of the LED to one side of the 220 ohm resistor and then take the other side of the 220 ohm resistor and put that into the ground rail. And the resistor, the orientation doesn't matter so you don't have to worry which way it goes. So now we're going to repeat that but instead of using pin 13 we'll use pin 12, add another LED, add another resistor that goes to ground. Finally, we're going to go ahead and put the push button on the breadboard. Now depending on the style of push button you have, they often fit well straddling that long trench that goes through the breadboard. On one side of the push button, you want to connect a jumper wire from pin 2 on the Arduino to that button. And then on the other side of the button, you simply want to connect it to ground using a jumper wire. That's pretty much it for setting up the circuit. It's pretty simple. So, when you press the push button, that's going to electrically connect both sides of that button and pin 2 will have ground voltage applied to it. And what we'll do is use that ground voltage input to trigger our different functions. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch. So here we are inside the sketch. And if you go to the Open Source Hardware Group website, and the link will be in the description below, you'll be able to download the file that is this sketch. You'll also be able to download the schematic that we just looked at. And you can also get a PDF version of this tutorial in written format. So let's go ahead and look at the top of this sketch. You can see we have comments. The comments are pretty straightforward. We already went through the circuit, have a couple notes, and then I just want to make a quick note uh, that this code was actually created by one of the members of the Open Source Hardware Group Premium Course. And he was new to Arduino a couple months ago and now he's doing really cool things. And he was working on a home automation project and he needed a piece of code that took one button but gave it multiple functions. And so I saw it and I thought, oh man, this is great, we should do, uh, make something with it, and he, he volunteered the code. So thank you, Steve. So the code is in the public domain, so we can feel free to do what we would like with it. So the next block of code is where we're going to declare and initialize variables. Now, we know we have to track how long we're pressing the button. So we're going to need a variable to do that. And the one we use is called press length underscore milliseconds. Now, that variable name might come off to you as too verbose and extremely annoying, and I wouldn't particularly argue with you there. However, I really feel like including the unit of measurement in the variable name helps readability. And readability is good not just for other people, when other people need to read your code, it's also good for future versions of yourself in you know six months from now when you don't remember what the heck you wrote. So again, we need a variable that's going to track how long we're holding the push button, and this is it. So the next thing we need to do is set a length of time for our different options to occur at. So I've defined two options here, option one milliseconds and option two milliseconds. And the value, which is in milliseconds, is the minimum amount of time that you must press the button in order for that option to happen. So you can see 100 milliseconds, that's just a tenth of a second, really just kind of a click of that button, and we should get the first option to happen. 
And then if you want the section, second option to happen, you have to hold that button for a minimum of 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds. If you wanted to add more options, this is where you would add those options and then you'd have to specify the time in here. Now the only other variables we're gonna declare and initialize are the pins where we have our hardware attached. So we have a button and that's uh, at pin two. And then we have an LED that's for option one. So that LED will turn on when the first option time is selected. And then we have an LED for the second option that will come on when the section, second option time is, is selected. So if we've held it for two seconds, that second option LED would come on. And I've just de defined those pins there. And that's pretty much it for the declaration and initialization of our variables. So now let's jump into the setup. So the first thing we're gonna do in the setup is set the modes of our pins. So we need to set the mode of the button pin, that's pin two, and of the LEDs, and those are at uh, pin 12 and 13. So we use the pin mode function to do that. And for the button, you'll notice that the mode we set is actually an input pull-up. Now I'm not gonna get too in depth on why I use input pull-up here because I do have another video that talks about it. But basically what we wanna do is we want the state of that pin to be a known value when we're not pressing the button. Okay, so when we set it as an input pull-up, what happens is there's an internal 20K resistor inside the Arduino chip and it connects that pin to five volts. So at any given time, if we're not pressing the button and we query the value at pin two, it's gonna return a one because one is a, a high input. So we know the state of the pin. Now, when we press our button and we connect the pin to ground, then we'll know that the button's been pressed because we see that ground voltage. And when we query that pin, it will return a zero. So again, if that sounds a little confusing, check out the video on the, uh, probably the floating pins. I think I talk about it in that video and that should clarify that. All right, and then the other thing we do is set the LEDs as outputs, and that's because we're gonna be applying voltage to pins 12 and 13, hence they need to be outputs. Finally, what we do in the setup is start serial communications. Again, that's really just for debugging, and that's gonna allow us to look at the amount of time that we have held the button down. All right, that's it for the setup. Let's check out the loop. So before we jump into the code of the loop, let's ask ourselves what we have to accomplish in this loop. So one, we need to be able to record the amount of time that the button's being pressed because that's gonna help us determine what option get, gets executed. And then we need to somehow define a way to have those options occur when those time thresholds have been met. So let's tackle that first item first. Let's capture how long we're pressing the button. And the way we're gonna do that is with a while loop. Now, if you look at the while loop, the condition is digital read button pin equal equal low. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna use the digital read function and we're gonna be looking at pin two and that's where the button is. Now, digital read is gonna return a one or a zero. It's gonna return a one if the pin is high and recall we had it set as an input pull up. So anytime we're not pressing the button, the pin is high. Now, when we press the button, pin two is connected to ground voltage and it would return a zero, which is also low. So digital read looking at the button when we're pressing the button is gonna return a low value. So when we're pressing the button, the while loop gets executed. And it's not just when we press the button, it's while the button is being pressed. Because as soon as we take our finger off the button, now the pin state goes back to a one, which is a high because we set it as an input pull up. And the while loop is gonna stop executing because the condition is not being met. So let's pretend we press and hold the button. What's the first thing we do? Well, the first thing we do is delay 100 milliseconds. After we've delayed 100 milliseconds, then we go ahead and set the length of time to the press length milliseconds variable. So if you recall, we set that value equal to zero. So what this says right now, the first time through the while loop is zero equals zero plus 100. So we are setting press length equal to 100. Seems a little odd, that syntax, but it will make sense as we continue to go through this while loop. So essentially, what have we done? Well, we've just added 100 milliseconds to our wait time because we just delayed 100 milliseconds. So then the next thing we wanna do is display that to the serial port and we use the print function from the serial library to do that. So let's say we're still holding the button. What happens next? Well, we continue this while loop. We delay another 100 milliseconds and now we get back to that curious statement where we've got press length milliseconds equal to press length milliseconds plus 100. 
So now the second time we've gone through the while loop, press length in milliseconds is 100. So now we're adding 100 to that value. So what's 100 plus 100? It's 200. Now we're going to print that value to the serial monitor and we go through the loop again. So let's pretend we're still holding that button. Now we're going to add, we're going to delay 100 milliseconds again and now we're going to add 100 to that. So what's 200 plus 100? Well it's 300. So you can see as we continue to hold the button, we continue to delay the program by 100 milliseconds and we continue to add 100 to the variable that's tracking our timing. And then all the while we do this, we continue to print that variable to the serial monitor to let us know how long we've been pressing the button. That's pretty much it. So now what happens when I release the button? When I let go, the pin is going to go to a high voltage and that while loop stops. And what I'm left with is the amount of time that I held the button stored into the press length milliseconds variable. And with that variable, we can move on to the different options. Well, now we have the time that we held the button. Now we need to compare it to the different options we have and then execute the option that fits that amount of time. So to do that we're going to use if else statements. Now we start with the option that has the longest start time first. So if you're going to add additional options to this and if they happen to be longer options then you need to make sure they go before this option right here. So the if statement we have, the condition we say is we ask is the press length milliseconds variable that we just recorded, is that greater than or equal to the option to milliseconds variable, which is essentially the threshold for that option to, to happen. So let's say we held the button for two and a half seconds. So what number would be in the press length milliseconds? Well, it would be 2,500. And so we want to know is 2,500 greater than or equal to 2,000? which was the threshold that we sent uh, set for option two. Well, yes, it is. So if it is, what do we do? Well, we execute that if statement, and inside there we have a digital write, and we're writing the LED option two pin high. So we turn on that LED. Pretty basic. So what if we didn't hold it for two seconds or more? What if we held it for less than two seconds? Let's say we held it for uh, a second and a half. What happens then? Well, the first if statement doesn't get executed because the condition isn't met. Clearly, a second and a half is not greater than or equal to two seconds. So we move on to the next statement, which is an else if. And now we reach, we take another condition and it says, okay, well, is the press length milliseconds variable, is it greater than or equal to option one milliseconds? So that was 100 milliseconds. So if we press the button for a second and a half, that would be 1500 milliseconds. So yes, 1500 is definitely greater than 100 milliseconds. So we're going to execute the code in here and what do we do? Same thing as before, we do a digital write except now we're going to turn on the other LED that we associated with option one. Really that's, that's the basis of this program. We have a while loop that is collecting the amount of time we're holding the button. When, that, when we release the button, we take that variable that holds that time and we compare it to the different options that we've set using if else statements. All right, and then finally what we do at the end is we want to reset that timer variable back to zero because we don't want every little button press to be cumulative. We want a fresh start every time we've released that button. So the next time we press the button we start with a fresh timer set at zero. So now let's go ahead and upload this code to the Arduino and open up the serial monitor and then let's take a look at how this works. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is the long button press. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull, hold that button down for at least two seconds and then release. So I'm holding it down. You can see the numbers counting up. I'm past 2,000 to 4,000 to release and then you can see the LED comes on. So now I want the short button press. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold the LED down again and release. I was at 1700 and you can see the uh, LED option one comes on, illuminates. And that's pretty much it, how it works. So it's really not too difficult and I'll tell you adding other options also isn't difficult. Just a couple things to keep in mind as you add more options. You want to be careful about how close 
you squeeze together the different, different options or it can make it difficult for the end user to try to figure out what exact timing that you've got set up. So I really haven't come to a rule of thumb yet uh, for what works best, but I think if you experiment around, you'll find out what works best for you. All right, well, hey, I hope that tutorial was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial and you should definitely check out the challenges that are about to follow. Have a great day. Bye.